prophecy. To more closely examine the subjects of this heated debate, John Quinones takes us inside one of the world's great treasures. We're looking at the greatest monuments ever built in history of that size, of that precision, of that quality, of that antiquity. And yet, we have no texts, we have no drawings, we have no plans. What we have here is, is, is a gigantic question mark. Robert Boval has spent 12 years searching for the key to one of the world's oldest mysteries. Why were Egypt's pyramids built? And why here, in the middle of the desert? For 4,500 years, John, this site, these pyramids, have stubbornly kept their secret. And suddenly, in the last few years, we're breaking through. The answers, he says, lie in the heavens. The Egyptians were the world's first astronomers, and they were also the first to name the constellations. Among the most important was Orion, which represented Osiris, the all-powerful god of the afterlife. Boval was intrigued by all of this, so he combined his background in engineering with astronomy and compared the location of the three pyramids at Giza with the positioning of the three main stars in the belt of Orion. It occurred to me that uh, you had three stars, you had three pyramids on the ground, and the next thing was to notice that the little star, the topmost star, was offset a little bit to the east. Just like? Just like what you see on the ground. And uh, immediately it was like two pictures overlapping in my mind, and I saw the pyramids in the sky. He then went a step further. He began studying the Great Pyramid of Cheops, the first and largest pyramid. Inside this massive tomb, we find burial chambers for the king and queen, a great gallery, and four shafts, two of them supposedly used for ventilation. Boval followed the trajectory of the southern shaft and discovered that it led directly to the constellation of Orion. The shaft pointed very precisely to Orion's belt. It is, in, sh in short, a finger. The pyramid points to its place in the sky. According to Boval's theory, when a pharaoh died, his body was mummified and then laid inside this great pyramid. It was part of an elaborate funeral ceremony that may have lasted months. And then, late one night, as the constellation of Orion appeared in the heavens, the king's spirit began its celestial journey. From this burial chamber, says Boval, the king's soul would fly through the southern shaft and now resurrected would find its final resting place among the stars. I've discovered that their intention was to build a afterworld, a world for the dead, a world for these monarchs that they believed existed in the sky. This theory, it's just fantasy. It's a fantasy theory. Zahi Hawass is perhaps the world's best-known expert on pyramids. We as Egyptologists try to write what's true. Try to write with evidence. You can't make a theory without evidence. As director of the Giza necropolis, the sprawling cemeteries that surround the pyramids, Hawass has little time for theories. And it's fascinating. This is the world's oldest tunnel? Oldest tunnel in history. If they did not cut that tunnel here, they have to go on the other side of the pyramid. It would be a very long detour. The pyramids, he says, were nothing more than royal tombs dedicated not to the stars, but to the sun. In fact, for hundreds of years, archaeologists have maintained that life in ancient Egypt revolved around the sun. The sun god Re, he was the main cult. The king, when he dies, he wants to become the sun god Re. Why was the sun so important to these people? This is the God who create the people in the morning. This is the God who do everything for the king. But Robert Boval says he has written proof that these pyramids were indeed launch pads to the afterlife. To find it, we have to travel a few miles south to Saqqara, home of the world's first pyramids. Beneath these sands lies the key to Boval's theory.
Oh, this is amazing. These are the pyramid texts, John. The pyramid texts, 4,500-year-old hieroglyphics, a kind of Egyptian Bible documenting a pharaoh's life and his relationship to the gods. They repeatedly tell us the king becomes a star, the king becomes a star, the king becomes a star in the constellation of Orion. The texts show the three stars of Orion sitting right next to a celestial river, the Milky Way. As they gazed upon the night sky, the people of the Old Kingdom noticed that every year when Orion appeared, the majestic Nile River would overflow and flood the central valleys of Egypt. It still does today. A kind of natural irrigation that turns the desert into one of the most fertile lands in the world. The whole magic of Egypt was linked to that magical river on the ground. Uh, they saw it in the sky. They saw it in Egypt in the sky. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful kind of an explanation to amuse me as a layman who's sitting at home drinking beer and watching the TV. But it will never give me any solid evidence to, rec to reconstruct the history. No evidence, he says, because the pyramid texts were written during an entirely different dynasty, almost a hundred years after the pyramids of Giza were built. You cannot use the pyramid texts, who are written long time after Dynasty Four pyramids, to reconstruct the function of the pyramid. As for the pyramid's location, archaeological research shows they were built here because this is where the Egyptians found enough limestone for the monuments. It was also the only place with a solid rock foundation that would keep the pyramids from sinking into the desert. But archaeology has certainly not put an end to all the theories about the pyramids. I have been answering hundreds of theories. Every theory will stay for two months, and after that it will go with the wind. Hawass has heard it all before. Theories that the pyramids were built by people from the lost civilization of Atlantis, by aliens or slaves. The ruins he's uncovered, he says, should put all those theories to rest. Take, for example, his latest discovery. This discovery, as I told you, is very important because this is unique architecture. A burial ground for common workers who built the pyramids. Yes. All of this is mud brick tombs. So there are symbols of pyramids all over. Yes, like this exactly. Like this. this is the first time the tombs have been shown to the public. They had this disease called bilharzia, and this disease eats the organic material in the body of the workman. And this is why all the skeletons that we found here died between the age of 30 to 35. So far, 600 skeletons have been unearthed here, each of them found in the fetal position facing the pyramid of the king. What does this tell you about their position in society? This will, first of all, will tell us that the pyramid builders were not slaves. They were not slaves. Could they have been slaves who were given tombs? No way. Those people are the people who made the eternity for the king, who made the king to be a god. And this is why the king gave him the privilege to be buried in a shadow. Slaves, he says, would have never been buried so close to the king. <laughs> While we watch, Hawass's team finds skeleton number 601. All the 600 skeletons of women and men, they had a stress on their back because they were moving heavy stuff up to the pyramid. They were moving large blocks up to build the pyramids. So they had a stress on the back? They had a stress on the back. It's believed the workers spent 20 years building just one of these pyramids. Hawa says it wasn't so much a religious experience, but rather a massive civic project designed to build a great society. Well, I think it is ridiculous. I mean, uh, it's grafting a modern vision of economics and, uh, and uh, social culture on people who didn't think like that at all. If you were guaranteed life after that for hard work, and you really believe it was possible, you'd do it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do this. No matter how backbreaking. No matter how backbreaking. You're paying for eternity. You're paying for a ticket to eternity. 
Boval is spreading his message in a book called The Orion Mystery, already a bestseller in England. It looks like we're, there's something to be examined here. He's getting rave reviews and is now on the lecture circuit. Now what you're seeing is a direct overhead of the Great Pyramid. Why has your theory been so well received in England? I think because it makes sense. I, th I, th I think that the human mind uh, 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 likes things that make sense. I always advise any one of my friends who doesn't have a job in America, you know what I tell them? Come by to the pyramids, take some photographs. Go to New York and think about any crazy idea. And write a book, you'll be rich. In just the last couple of years, Hawass and his team of archaeologists have discovered the ruins of an entire city at Giza. Including yet another pyramid. They're now rebuilding it. Archaeologists say, despite centuries of excavation, only 30% of what lies beneath these sands has been uncovered. There is so much more to learn. Did the Egyptians know something about an afterlife that we have yet to discover? Could the pyramids be the passageway to heaven? Dr. Hawass, you have to admit, the position of the pyramids is just like the position of the stars of Orion. It's an imagination, it's fantasy. The man is not basing his theory on, on any archaeological or philological evidence at all. For now, the archaeologist is busy restoring the Great Sphinx. And the engineer, he's writing another book, this time claiming the Sphinx is 8,000 years older that most archaeologists believe. As for his controversial claims about the pyramids, what if your theory is proven wrong? I don't think it will be proved wrong. I don't think it will be proved right. <laughs> We're left with a question mark, and that's the beauty of it. Another question was raised just last month when a Greek archaeologist announced that she'd found the long-lost tomb of Alexander the Great deep in Egypt's western de desert. Both Greek and Egyptian archaeologists are doubtful about the discovery. Coming up, it takes endless hours of practice, thousands of miles from home. I miss out on...